Let me ask you all a question. With all the merchandising flood of Marvel spin-offs in the wake of the cinematic universe, why has there not been a new role-playing game? There's been board and card games in the last few years, sure, but no new RPG since the short-lived Marvel heroic role-playing, which I reviewed years ago, and yes, I am still salty that it got killed off so quickly. The fact that nobody is given leave to try again continues to baffle me. It must be one of those deep questions left for the great minds of this industry, because clearly my mind is not great for it. But this frustration makes me thankful when fans create spiritual successors. During a previous golden age of the comics, TSR had not one but two games with the license under their belt. We'll be looking at one of these, the more well-regarded one from the 1980s in Marvel Super Heroes. Kind of. See, we're not looking at that game specifically, known as Marvel Faceerp, but rather a fan successor of it, known as Nth Edition, written by Jason Jolin. While it's not the only game taking notes from MSH, this particular one has the famous, or infamous, Universal Table. Does it hold up? Let's find out. While MSH has a structured form of character creation, we'll be going with the traditional random setup. Now before we start the crunch, allow me a moment to introduce you to the Universal Table. Get used to this table, as we'll be referencing it a lot with our sample character, Spada. Now the first step is choosing the Balance Point. This is the average rank for the abilities of the Universal Table. The point is the determining factor of the overall power level the GM wishes to run. For the purposes of example, we'll be going with Spectacular, which has a default rating of 50. Second, we generate abilities. This is done by rolling D100 10 times and comparing it with the rank balance table, moving left or right a number of columns based on each result, with the first number in each column being used. For this, we rolled the following results. 98, 84, 44, 65, 49, 31, 88, 82, 64, and 100. Comparing this to the universal table, we have fighting 75, Agility 65, Might 45, Endurance 55, Shoot 50, Will 40, Observe 70, Reason 65, Cunning 55, and Resources 75. Next is Powers, Talents, and Stunts. Now powers are similar to powers in other superhero games. Talents are more akin to feats, and stunts are more akin to specific powers and, more importantly, tricks. Much like attributes, this is rolled on percentile tables. First to determine how many of each the character has, and the second is for the respective grade of the talents. For the rules here, we have a 30, 93, and 65, granting us three powers, four talents, and two stunts. For our powers, we'll go with Blast, Regeneration, and Teleportation, each at rank 50. For talents, we'll go with Blades, Pinpoint Punch, Observe, and Jack of All Trades. Rowing for the respective ranks, we get an 83, 38, 40, and 67. This makes the respective grades to be Master, Pro, Pro, and Guru. For stunts, we go with Recovery and Enhanced Sense. In this case, our sense is Sight. Lastly, Derived Attributes. The first is Health, which is the sum of Fighting, Agility, Might, Endurance, Shoot, and Will. In our case, that's 290. Second is Sanity, which is the psychological sister to Health. This is calculated as the sum of Will, Observe, Reason, and Cunning. In our case, that totals to 230. Lastly, initiative, which is derived from fighting, agility, observe, and cunning divided by 4. In our case, our initiative is 66, making his initiative rank to 13. Character creation presented here is about what one would expect from a superhero game. The only part I felt needed more clarification is the power ranks within the randomized system. I can make sense of it in the constructed version, but not the random version. Even so, the game does handle something that few super RPGs do and that's the ability to make characters quickly without relying on a template. It's good, but a little rough. MSH Nth Edition uses what it calls the Feat System, or Function of Exceptional Ability or Talent. Much like our last entry, Feat uses a percentile die system. But unlike Star Frontiers, the percentile roll is far more unified, which brings us to the Universal Table. When making a roll, also known as a Feat, you compare the difference between the rank of the ability, power, etc. taken, and the rank of the ability used as an intensity, the means of resisting. These are applied as column shifts to the universal table. For example, an ability of stunning and intensity of great would have a difference of two, resulting in two column shifts. Obviously, other effects can modify the total shifts further. 
You then roll on the plus 2 CS column and compare the resulting color to one of the five results. Blue for critical failure, white for regular failure, green for success, yellow for critical, and red for resounding critical. So using my earlier example, if I rolled a 61, that would count as a success, whereas if I rolled a 90, it would be a critical. The effects of these may vary depending on the action, and some of these are included in the results roll for the sake of convenience. Drama points are MSH's extra effort mechanic. These may be used to invoke a distinction and subsequently improve a result by one color, or by compelling someone else's distinction and force that participant to act according to it. It can also be used to push an ability, rolling endurance to grant a temporary boost in column shifts. The universal table and the use of ranks can appear intimidating, but in practice it's anything but. Now I could see this being a bit swingy in the eyes of some, as D100 systems tend to be, but my only real issue is that it took a couple passes to make sense of it as written. It's a classic case of diamond in the rough. It was an interesting bit of timing to cover this right after Star Frontiers. That game used a percentile system as well, but it had a bunch of situational ranges that reduced the game's overall rating. Marvel Super Heroes does not have that issue. Thanks to the Universal Table, there's a clear pillar to build around, and thus why it doesn't surprise me that the original version still manages to hold up to this day. Nth Edition, while having some changes from the original MSH, does enough on its own to establish its approach, but the only thing holding it back is a bit of presentation issues. I'm not going to harp too much on that as this is a passion project, but it is a thing of note. With all that said, I'm willing to give this game a stamp of recommended. It's amazing how enduring MSH's system is, and while I have my issues with OSR style of play, that's not present here. MSH is a solid experience for any generation of playstyle, and I hope to see its experience endure in the future. I'd also be remiss if I didn't point out the site Classic Marvel Forever, which is a repository of character sheets, house rules, references, and so on from the classic MSH system. Even if you don't run it, I'd recommend checking it out. Unlike the current comics and coming movies, you won't feel dirty afterwards. Next time, we'll be moving away from percentile role-playing to a first for Gaming Monk review. Card Systems.